Hey guys, Joe here, and in today's video we are taking a look at a subcompact pistol from Canik that is pretty damn cool, and you may actually want to carry. So let's open this box up eventually, and take a look at the upside down firearm that's in the case. Before we get going, let's go ahead and do a safety check, drop the magazine out, bring the slide back, lock it open, check, and check. Yep, the firearm is clear. So we can take a look at the TP9SC. This is the subcompact version of the Elite, and it's made by Canik out of Turkey. And it's a pretty interesting firearm, and I wanted to take a look at it, so I borrowed it from my buddies at Liberty Arms. Google them down below. They're in Harrisonburg, Virginia. You can get one of your own. For under $400, this is a very, very intriguing pistol. So let's take a look at it, but let's start with the box. You get a bunch of stuff in this plastic box. It's not airline approved, but it's still a nice box for storage. Up at the top here, you have a embossed little piece of foam that on the back side has your owner's manual. In the top of the case, they kind of really pack this thing in tight, which is pretty impressive. You got a cleaning brush and a rod for pulling through your cleaning swabs. In the lower compartment, you have two magazines. One is in the firearm when it's shipped to you. The second one is an extended mag. And we'll be taking a look at both of those. You get an extra back strap as well as a extra base pad. You can put it on either magazine, but if you put the flat floor pad on there, it makes it a little bit even more concealable. You get your typical Canik box of extra parts such as a different mag release. You get a set of plates for the RMR cutout. And yes, this gun has an RMR cutout or optics cutout at $400. You get your gun lock and just your typical stuff that comes with the rest of the firearm. You also get a outside the waistband Kydex. I'm not sure if it's actual Kydex, but plastic molded holster which is really nice although it is only for righties but you can see it grabs a firearm holds it nice and secure and that's included in the firearm as well so you get all this cool stuff and it starts at 380 bucks for my buddy's shop msrp is 430 which is still a good price for what you're getting on this firearm but at 379 I almost bought it because I sold my SAR 9 through his shop and it could have covered it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pistol. If you're familiar with Canik, then you'll be familiar with this design. Most of their pistols share it. This is the TP9 Elite in subcompact. Subcompact is a little bit of a misnomer. That's mostly referring to the frame because the slide is a little bit lengthy. It competes with probably a I'd say a Taurus G3C, possibly. Uh, also, it's a little bit longer than things like the 43. It'd be closer in length to a 48, but it is much wider. That's fine by me. I don't care. The, the slide is about the same width as the magazine, which, again, is a high-capacity jabo. You're looking at 12 rounders in the smaller base pad and 15 rounders in the extended. What it does is it just looks like it's a standard Canik mag and they just put a modified base pad on it so that it meets up higher in the firearm but it still sticks out just as far as a normal 15 rounder would. This is striker fired single action so once you pull the trigger it is dead until it resets. Has a striker charged indicator or just a striker indicator here. It has a flat fronted rear sight so you can manipulate it on a table, your clothes, a belt, whatever have you. The rear sight is blacked out with anti glare striations going across it. The front is a bright dot. It is luminescent, but it isn't trigicon or it doesn't have tritium in it. As far as I can see, there would be something on the sight itself if it was. Both sights are dovetailed in, so they are replaceable, and the optics cut does not interfere with the rear sight, so the optics will go in front of the rear sight. More than likely, your optics will be sitting higher, so it's not a co-witness sight, but it's still nice to have the option to run optics on such a small pistol. This is usually a very expensive option on a lot of pistols, such as the Hellcat with its optics, or the... Uh, 
P365 with an optics. It's hard to get that optics for a reasonable price and at under $400 this is a very reasonable price. The gun is ambidextrous. You have a slide lock slide release on both sides. The takedown is ambidextrous and the mag release is reversible. There's no external safety on this one which is perfectly fine. Striker fired gun with a trigger safety. Your likelihood of accidentally discharging it is low. It is a very obvious trigger safety. Big red piece of plastic in there in the middle of the trigger. And it has striations on the trigger itself which make it so that you can easily maintain a grip on it. Two slot pick rail in the front so you can mount a light, a laser, a bazooka, a tripod. Whatever you feel like putting on there that will fit on a two slot pick rail. It's a three and a half inch barrel. It is a breech lockup style. Let's go ahead and try the trigger. Canix out of the box are known for having really decent striker fired triggers and this one is no exception. Single action only again and you do have the trigger safety but once you engage that which is very simple just put your finger on it and pull it back till it's flush. The trigger comes back to here. Nothing really stopping it at all. You can see how smooth that is. And then you just break. So wall and break. Reset is nice and short, just like all the TP9s I've ever touched have been, and then it goes right into the next shot. Doink! Really impressed. Let's go ahead and take it down real quick. It takes down like any other Canik, but before we do that, obviously, let's go ahead and safety check it again. I will never stop safety checking a firearm because it's super easy, super simple, and super safe. Takedown is slightly different from a standard TP9 because of the subcompract... Subcompract... Nice English. The takedown is slightly different because this is the subcompact version of the gun. It's not going to slide completely off the top of the frame. You just bring it down just like you would a standard gun, pull the trigger, and once you pull it forward, it's going to stop on its own. At that point, you just lift it off. The ejector is going to actually catch inside a void that they drilled into there. So, as you can see, it wouldn't go back on even if you wanted it to because they wanted to create a subcompact that was truly a subcompact. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and set down the frame, pop your spring out. It's double captive, which is nice. You don't have to worry about that going anywhere. And then the barrel just drops out. Browning lockup style. It is breech lockup. Catches here on top of the hood of the slide. Finished very well. Very, very minor machining marks visible under bright lights, but it's not too bad at all. It's got a drop safety, obviously, and there is for the striker. It's nice, big, chunky metal. Should hold up. I haven't heard about anything going really wrong with these. I know first generation TP9 SAs and DAs, sometimes that striker charger could actually snap off, but I haven't heard about that in modern times. The barrel is just typical 9mm, ramped at the back end where it loads into the breech. Nicely finished. The frame. Again, very typical Canik design, except for the fact that it is an Ambi slide release. That's a nice addition to have. This being the Elite is the reason why it's got Ambi. The grip panels are nice and aggressive, but they don't stick out far. So unless you're actually grabbing it, it's not going to stick in your hand. So you can just run your fingers along it. But once you're actually grabbing it, it's going to stay in your grip. Front pyramids on here for a grip, as well as on the back strap. Nice. With those four parts, you are field stripped, so maintenance is nice and easy, oiling it's nice and easy, all that good stuff. Reverse the order in order to reassemble it. Slide your barrel in, take your guide rod, big end goes forward in this particular one, and put it in there. Make sure the spring is nice and flat. If you don't do that, the gun will stick and not line up and it won't go back together right. In order to reassemble it, you need to actually not start it like you would a standard gun. You need to bring it back here over the ejector until it sits flush on the frame. At that point, you just put it back together, rack the slide, pull the trigger. This gun is ready to go. So what do I think of the Canik TP9 SC Elite? I think it's a pretty nice gun. It is a chunky boy. It's a little bit heavy, but that just means it's really going to easily handle that recoil. 
because 9mm doesn't have a massive kick to begin with. And when you have a lot of reciprocating mass, it means it will handle that weight very well. I've always been a fan of the value of Canix. Canix are extremely reasonably priced for what you get. Yeah, $400 for a gun is not the cheapest price in the world for a gun. You can get stuff like the Taurus and other guns that are $100, $150 cheaper. But keep in mind what you get with this firearm. You get a very nice trigger. You get very nice optics, ready uh, cutouts on most of the top-end guns, the Elites, the SFX, and all that stuff at that under $400 price point. You get very good construction. These are Turkish military-approved sidearms, so they are field-tested, and lots of rounds go through them. Just overall, the quality seems to be there. The folks that I know that have them swear by them. I've had the SA and the SA, or excuse me, I had the... Um, TP9SA with the decocker on top, so a technically first generation gun, although it was a 1.5 because it was slightly different. I've also had the SFX long slide, so my history with Canik has been good. I've never had one fail on me, and I've never had to experience customer service, but from what I understand, that's also good. If you'd like to check one of these out, give my buddies a call down in Harrisonburg. Just Google it, Liberty Arms in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Tell them that you saw it on the Jiminy Show, that you're looking to maybe check out the features and compare it to other firearms. If they still have it, great. If they don't, put your name on the list and I'm sure they can get it for you. So that's it. I'm out of here. Thanks for checking out this video. There is the range video of Daniel and I shooting uh, the SAR-9 out at the range that's coming. I just really didn't feel comfortable with the way I looked in that video, but I'm going to put it up anyway. So showing you everything, warts and all. Leave me a message. Let me know how you feel about yours. And as always, I'll talk to you later.